Greetings, and welcome back to the channel, as I continue to delve into the world of sci-fi cinema. 1928 was not the most memorable year for genre films, but it was an important marker of how filmmakers around the world would move forward after the game-changing works of Metropolis and The Jazz Singer of 1927. The seeds for major change were planted, and no one in the film industry could go back. Though the one science fiction film of this year is not as well remembered, the novels and short stories created would be a major part of our history. A child born in this year would go on to write many of the stories we'd see on film and television even to this day. And the inventions and innovations made in both color film processing and television would bring about some of the next great waves in the industry. As the curtain rose on films of all genres made in 1928, the cinematic landscape bore witness to a dynamic shift, a response to the evolving taste and expectations of audiences. Silent films had reigned supreme, their narratives conveyed through evocative visuals and expressive gestures, but sound was beginning to move in to the theatrical landscape. However, in the wake of technological advancements and societal changes, the emergence of science fiction as a transformative genre signaled a departure from conventional storytelling. And just a quick side note, if you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more history of sci-fi content. Your support means a lot as this channel continues to grow. Our single film of 1928, Orone, does not come across today as a traditional sci-fi film in any sense, especially since once you get past the initial plot point of creating our title character through the means of artificial insemination, the sci-fi aspects mostly disappear. Elrone, a German silent science fiction film directed by Heinrich Galin, stands as an exploration of science, ethics, and the repercussions of meddling with the natural order. Starring Bridget Helm and Paul Wegener, the film tells the tale based on Hans Heinz Ewer's novel, delving into themes that blur the boundaries between science and the supernatural. This adaptation is a remake of the lost 1918 Hungarian film that I discussed in episode 3. It becomes a canvas for examining the consequences of tampering with nature and the creation of a manufactured femme fatale. The story revolves around a professor portrayed by Paul Wegener a scientist consumed by the pursuit of proving his theories on heredity through artificial insemination. In a bold and ethically questionable experiment, he inseminates a prostitute, a woman he deems unworthy by society, with the semen of a hanged murderer, leading to the birth of Arone. She grows up to become the femme fatale Bridget Helm, renowned for her role in Metropolis, and she embodies the titular character a woman whose mysterious allure captivates men, setting the stage for a series of tragic events that question the morality of scientific intervention. As Orani grows, it becomes apparent that she possesses a peculiar allure that ensnares men. The film delves into her relationships with men, resulting in death and tragedy. The story looks at the moral quandaries surrounding this scientific experiment, that brought her into existence, questioning the consequences of manipulating the forces of nature. And when she discovers the truth of her creation, Arani seeks revenge on her adoptive father, the professor. As the film unfolds, it could have been a haunting exploration of the consequences of tampering with nature, but I don't think it quite reached deep enough. The cinematic atmosphere featured elaborate set designs, dramatic lighting, and symbolic imagery, characteristic of German Expressionism, which was still popular at the time. Bridget Helm's performance, known for its versatility and expressiveness, played a pivotal role in conveying the mysterious and alluring nature of the character. Though a silent film, her performance speaks volumes. German Expressionist horror director Heinrich Alleyne and the cinematography from Franz Planner as well as the art direction by Max Halbronner and Walter Ryman, 
created the film's visual identity, embracing expressionist aesthetics with elaborate and stylized sets contributing to the overall mood. The adaptation of Hans Heinz Ewer's novel, with its elements of exploring science, ethics, and the supernatural, should have been a guiding force in shaping the narrative, but the more controversial elements were left off screen. The story of Arane emerges as a reflection of the societal anxieties and cultural transformations of 1928. There is a discussion to be had if Elrane is a feminist film. Bridget Helm's performance as the title character is a prototype of the femme fatale that we'll see in later Hollywood films. But the over-controlling nature of her adoptive father, the professor who created her, then begs the question if she's even a woman or merely a creation by men, an experiment and nothing more. She is punished for her sexuality even though it is the men who are fixated by her, as if it is her fault. But Alrani still pushes forward even after discovering the truth of her creation. But is she truly in control or just acting on the evil natures that created her? This film does do something that I truly appreciate about the genre. It is grounded on Earth and keeps the story small, to focus on human motivations and the possibilities of technological progress. It deals with the consequences of manipulation and experimentation on fellow humans. It asks more questions than it answers about the morals of artificial insemination, women as puppets, and how far science should go in the manipulation of the human body. It does seem like the version that is readily available online has been partially edited to cut out the professor's motivations and the actual insemination slash creation of an unholy child. This would have been an important aspect of the film to see and give more weight to the consequences. Many reviews of this film at the time praise Helm's erotic performance, and she would go on to reprise her role in the 1930s sound version, which I'll discuss in an upcoming episode. During this time, there were several notable science fiction novels, pulp magazines, and short stories that were published, and it's worth noting that some of these literary works found their way into the world of feature films or television, either as direct adaptations or as sources of inspiration for future sci-fi cinematic ventures. The Skylark of Space by E.E. E. Doc Smith Serialized in Amazing Stories in 1928, the idea for this series started in 1915. It marked the beginning of the Skylark series and featured interstellar travel, advanced technology, and epic space adventures. Smith's stories were the earliest examples of space opera, a subgenre of science fiction that would become its most popular in 1977 with the release of Star Wars. The Rocket to the Moon by Taya von Harba. This is a 1928 science fiction novel that explores the thrilling journey of a group of visionaries as they embark on a perilous expedition to the moon. Fueled by ambition, the characters grapple with scientific challenges, interpersonal dynamics, and the mystery of the cosmos. The novel would be adapted into the 1929 film, The Woman in the Moon, directed by Fritz Lang. Armageddon 2419 AD by Philip Francis Nowlin. This novella first appeared in Amazing Stories in 1928 and introduces readers to the character of Anthony Rogers, who finds himself in a futuristic world after being placed in a state of suspended animation. The character is known better today as Buck Rogers and had to navigate a worn torn earth in the 25th century where he becomes a key figure in the struggle between two opposing factions and adapts to advanced technology of the future. Rogers would go on to appear in pulp magazines, comic strips, comic books, radio programs, a 12-part serial film in 1939, and several television series. On an interesting side note, both Nowlin's Armageddon 2419 AD and Smith's The Skylark of Space both appeared in the same issue of Amazing Stories in August 1928. There's one notable creator that was born in this year, 
that influenced future authors and filmmakers. Philip K. Dick Born December 16, 1928, Philip K. Dick is one of science fiction's most prolific and well-known writers. Many of his works would go on to become feature films and television series, including The Man in the High Castle, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, which would become Blade Runner, We Can Remember It For You Wholesale, which would be adapted into Total Recall, as well as Minority Report, Paycheck, A Scanner Darkly, The Adjustment Bureau, among many others. No part of history exists in a vacuum. Culture, history, science, the arts, and even film are influenced by, as well as influence the course of history. And so, when looking at science fiction films of this time, it is important to understand what else was going on in the world. And so, for the rest of this episode, I would like to take a look at some historical, cultural, and cinematic events that occurred at this time. To begin, let's delve into the captivating historical events that shaped this era, leaving an indelible mark on society. The Kellogg-Briand Pact In 1928, the United States and 14 other nations signed the General Treaty for Renunciation of War as an instrument of national policy, also known as the Pact of Paris. The treaty signed by Germany, France, and the United States renounced the use of war as a means of settling disputes and is considered a precursor to the United Nations Charter. Japan breaks off diplomatic relations with China. Diplomatic ties between Japan and China severed following the Jinan Incident, during which Chinese forces opposed Japanese efforts to extend their influence. This pivotal event signaled a decline in relations, exacerbating tensions and setting the stage for larger conflicts in East Asia. The incident served as a precursor to the intensifying hostilities that ultimately erupted in the Second Sino-Japanese War and World War II. The First Trans-Pacific Flight In June 1928, Australian aviators Charles Kingford Smith and Charles Ulm achieved the first successful trans-Pacific flight, flying from Oakland, California to Brisbane, Australia, in their aircraft, the Southern Cross. The 7,250-mile flight took almost 84 hours to complete. The cultural landscape of this time was marked by several events and developments, some of which carry a lasting impact into today. Here are some of the biggest cultural events of 1928. The premiere of George Gershwin's An American in Paris. This iconic composition premiered in 1928 at Carnegie Music Hall in New York City. It combined elements of classical music with jazz, capturing the spirit of the Roaring Twenties in America. Lady Chatterley's Lover is banned in the United Kingdom. D.H. Lawrence's novel faced a ban due to its explicit sexual content, leading to a legal trial in 1960 where it was eventually acquitted, marking a milestone in the loosening of censorship laws. The ban and subsequent trials sparked discussions about freedom of expression, obscenity laws, and societal attitudes towards sexuality in literature. And lastly, the scientific events and discoveries that contributed to the advancement of knowledge in various fields, especially in medicine. They continue to influence scientific research and technological developments to this day. The Discovery of Penicillin Scottish physician and microbiologist Alexander Fleming discovered penicillin, the first antibiotic drug, in September 1928. This marked a groundbreaking advancement in medicine, revolutionizing the treatment of bacterial infections. Invention of the Iron Lung Invented by Philip Drinker and Louis Aziz Shaw in 1928, This was a groundbreaking respiratory apparatus that played a crucial role in providing mechanical ventilation for individuals with polio and other respiratory conditions. 
When discussing science fiction films from this time, it's essential to consider the broader context of cinema of that year. Non-science fiction films that came out of mostly Hollywood and the American film industry can offer valuable insights into the cinematic techniques, artistic innovations, and the cultural trends that influenced and shaped filmmakers during this time. Each film contributed to the history of cinema, and though this channel is primarily about science fiction, I do want to highlight some of the non-science fiction films released in 1928. Lights of New York This groundbreaking but mostly forgotten crime drama is considered the first all-talking feature film. Take it from me, they'll take it from you. It depicted the gritty underworld of New York City as it follows intertwining fates of a group of characters involved in illegal activities during the Prohibition era. Filmed on a modest $23,000 budget, it grossed over $1 million and proved to Hollywood that sound was the future of filmmaking. The Circus Directed by and starring Charlie Chaplin, The Circus is a classic silent comedy film. Chaplin's comedic genius was at its peak during this period, and the film was well-received by both audiences and critics. Steamboat Willie This groundbreaking animated short film was directed by Walt Disney and Ob Iwerks. It popularized Mickey Mouse and marked a pivotal moment in animation history as one of the first synchronized sound cartoons. The Singing Fool This musical drama starring Al Jolson tells the story of a singer's rise to fame, capturing the public's fascination with sound and cinema and solidifying Jolson's status as a prominent figure in the transition from silent to sound films. It became the highest grossing film of the year. The technical innovations made during this time were increasing at an ever rapid pace. Hollywood as an industry was continuing to grow. Some major technical and business innovations include the achievements of John Logie Baird. On July 3rd, 1928, Scottish inventor John Logie Baird demonstrated the first color television transmission. And in the same year, his company, the Baird Television Development Company Limited, made the first transatlantic television transmission from London to New York. Both were significant steps towards the development of modern television technology. The formation of RKO Radio Pictures Corporation, October 23, 1928. RKO Pictures emerged through a merger of KAO and the Radio Corporation of America. RKO became a major film studio that played a significant role in Hollywood's golden age. The Two-Color Technicolor Process This particular two-color technicolor process known as Process 3 was used in the film The Viking, released in 1928. This process used dye to chemically color two complementary images onto a single strip of film. The year 1928, poised on the precipice of cinematic and cultural revolution, served as a brief respite before the storm of change that loomed on the horizon. Science fiction films like Alvrone not only showcased the genre's narrative versatility, but also mirrored the cultural nuances of a world caught in the throes of transformation. Beyond the silver screen, the cultural landscape of 1928 dealt with the echoes of societal shifts, economic uncertainties, and the evolving fabric of human consciousness. 1928 was a momentary pause, a calm before the storm unleashed by events of the following year and into the 1930s. This backdrop lent a unique flavor to the science fiction narratives of the time. In a landscape dominated by tales of space exploration and interstellar conflicts, Elrani dared to venture into the realm of everyday people, wielding science as a potent force, a harbinger of the genre's potential for nuanced storytelling. Thank you so much for watching. 
Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for future videos about the history of sci-fi cinema. In the next episode, I'll close out this fascinating decade with the films of 1929.